fun because we got those play-in games that start uh, start tonight, and uh, you got to have your stuff turned in or it's not live. So I'm gonna get mine Doesn't turned count. in. I hadn't I hadn't done it yet. I'm gonna t- I'm gonna say to uh, here shortly who I think the final four teams will be. But um, we should I, have asked the AI. Maybe that maybe yeah, we would have gotten. No, oh, yeah. a, you know, like maybe we got a better prediction. Yeah, well, a lot of a lot of schools are starting to realize kids aren't doing their homework anymore, but AI is. So yeah. I think AI is going to going to uh, die a horrible death in a lot of ways because of that. And humans have to program the computers anyway. We got Mitch Davis. He was there for every game last week, and uh, oh uh, no, that happened oh. to me last week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, Mitch Davis was was out last week at, at every tournament game. He was on there. Uh, we're going to have him, nice. Yancey Porter, Rebel Yell Hotline, and we're going to have Rodney Orr, Tyler, Insider. So let's do this. Get pen and paper handy. Smash the bottom right-hand corner and hit the subscribe button to YouTube, and we'll be right back. We're going to be talking SEC college basketball and uh, how you can send Christmas gifts to the people on that selection committee. <laughs> be right back. Sidelines with Rob Brown. Talk sporty to me. All right. Uh, hey, let, let's, let's say this. Mitch, you have got to be one of... Uh, somebody's got the jazz music on in the background. Oh, that's, our, that's my Mitch music. Okay, okay. I didn't know. That's his intro music, man. Well, no. You want, you want Mitch music? What you need is... James Brown, hardest working man in the media. He was at every game, every press conference last week. Multiple texts from uh, sidelines fans uh, around the country. It was pretty cool going, I saw Mitch asking questions. And uh, you, you were everywhere. Mitch Davis, the Mitch Davis Show.com. By the way, um, you know, and I, and I agree, you got to play, the, the, the team's got to play who they got to play. But Fans and, and people in the media have every right in the world to raise hell. But Martin Newton and Greg Byrne and Charles McClellan, the commissioner of the Southwest Conference, all these people, what the hell? When you look at the ratings, the net ratings, the Ken Palm and all that stuff that they shove in our face every single minute of every ESPN broadcast, what does that stuff mean if Auburn is the lowest ranked fourth seed and Alabama, a four seed, and uh, UAB all have to go to Spokane. What about letting the fans participate in the games? This committee and this pod system and all, Mitch, makes sense out of it. And by the way, good morning and welcome to Sidelines. Hi, Mitch. <laughs> good morning, guys. I apologize I couldn't come on yesterday. I was uh, I was exhausted. I stayed in bed at 9 o'clock and hopped on work at 9 30. I was yesterday was a drag. So now Nashville, I didn't go out and party at all. I just was just you didn't have time. Crank, no, cranking out content, covering that yeah. magical Mississippi State run. And uh, you know, it was a busy weekend and we're gonna repeat it all all over again. I'm heading to Memphis uh to cover Texas AM and Clemson uh in the Memphis Pied or the Memphis Regional. Um a little disappointed with the selection committee. I I I, I don't understand it. I mean, looking at these brackets and looking where they're sending teams, Memphis, for example, is not going to sell any tickets for Texas A&M, Houston. Baylor might travel just a little bit. Mm. New Mexico might bring some fans. But, I mean, they yeah. have the opportunity to put Mississippi State. If they were going to put an 8-9 here, the opportunity to put Mississippi State here. If they were going to put a 3-C, they, hop, they hop, had the opportunity to either put Kentucky, Auburn, or even Alabama here. If they were going to put a one seed, Houston makes sense. I get Houston because geographically, 
but why are they sending Baylor? Why are they sending Texas A&M? Why are they sending Clemson? Clemson could have been playing a short drive over in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, Clemson is a five seed. They could have been replacing the five seed in the Charlotte, North Carolina regional. And it just doesn't really make sense. I, I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. And if our biggest, our biggest thing is to grow the game and to reach audiences and sell tickets and make money, then why is guys like Greg Byrne and all these other guys, uh, you know, sending all the Alabama schools out, you know, 20 hours away to play in Spokane, Washington, where they could have easily played in either Memphis or Charlotte uh, or even like Pittsburgh. They could have played in Pittsburgh, which is a lot shorter drive, a doable drive for Auburn, Alabama, Stanford uh, fans, even UAB fans. So I, I don't get it. I don't understand how the brackets work. I, I guess somebody – with a lot more knowledge of the situation can maybe inform me of this um, because I, I don't know. I don't get it. I really truthfully do not understand, you know, and then they got it right with North Carolina, Tennessee. They sent them to Charlotte, but again, I, you know, Tennessee could have easily played in Memphis and sold been the two seed here in Memphis and sold, you know, bukus of tickets with all the Tennessee fans in the Memphis Metro Politan area and around West Tennessee, they could have sold bukus of tickets. But instead, yeah. man, Memphis, I'm looking at the ticket resale thing. The tickets keep on dropping because it's just not a draw. I mean, we got all the Texas schools. They're going to be playing in Memphis. And don't get me wrong, I'm very excited about the opportunity to cover the NCAA tournament. This is my second March Madness that I get to cover in person. That's awesome. But I, I do wish that the committee would have done cities like Memphis and Charlotte and all those places a little bit of a, more of a favor uh, because a lot of these cities, when they get to host the NCAA tournament, this is a once every – five, ten-year rotation. And so yeah. these cities, man, they get that one weekend of tourism dollars, and, and you can't tell me that Memphis businesses are excited to get the Aggies. I was in Nashville. Texas A&M maybe had 200 fans in Nashville. They don't I, care about basketball. They no. Don't. They, and, and that's the same way, you know, Baylor fans, I'm sure, I'm hoping they're going to travel. But, I mean, Clemson fans, I didn't even know Clemson had basketball fans. I I, yeah. I mean, I'll be honest, no disrespect to the program because they, what they've done out there and they've built a great program, but no disrespect to the program. But I didn't know that their fans actually even knew they had a basketball program. So I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I'm a little ticked off that they would have screwed Auburn and Alabama the way they did and also screwed the city of Memphis. I mean, you know, they, they want to have Memphis host these great events and Memphis is a hell of a city to host these places. These, type of things but then they screw them over you know i mean the american athletic two three years ago decided to pull the conference tournament out of memphis and now they went to dickie's arena and i don't know if you guys saw the crowds this weekend uh um, there were no was, crowds yeah i mean after memphis got beat there was nobody left i mean yeah i i don't i don't get it i don't get why you want to screw over certain cities but hey that's where we are with the NCAA. i'll right. tell you what it is it's this it's this crap that goes on in our society we want everybody to feel good we don't want anybody anybody to be left out and it and it's a bunch of participation trophy put stuff charles mcclellan the commissioner of the southwest athletic conference i mean what what what, what greg byrne these guys are all from the South. Martin Newton is the AD at Samford, okay? Um, and you send all these pro and Samford goes to Salt Lake City. What yeah. in the hell are you thinking? You know, and then you send, what, a five seed Clemson gets to go to Charlotte? No, they get to come to Memphis. I mean, I'm sorry, coming to Memphis, yeah. Yeah. Because I was going to say, you know, Charlotte is, what, 35 miles from the South Carolina border. I was just over there <laughs> last five weeks ago. and. Yeah. North Carolina, of course they're going to get there. Look, if you can't pick up on what goes on on ESPN, yeah. the Brahmin, the Chosen Ones, the Back Bay of Boston, Winthorpe, it, it, yeah. it's a bunch of it's a bunch of politics. It's a and bunch gave, of got, it's a bunch of hacks truth. up there that have an agenda and a narrative, yeah. and they're going to drive it down your throat at all costs. And I'm going to tell you something. You look at ESPN. You look at CBS and Fox in college football. They've always got to have the minders from Ohio yeah. State. It's like anyone who travels to China or any other Russia, you've got minders around you watching every move you make. That's exactly what goes on in basketball. And the fans of Auburn and Alabama and Sanford and UAB and a lot of other fan base got screwed. 
Okay. Yeah. Now, UConn, you know, Bobby Hurley, how many times can he tell us he's got the greatest team in America? You know what? And <laughs> nobody's going to challenge him on it because he's part of the East Coast elite media establishment. Yeah. And I'm mad as hell. And I mean, it is. It's ridiculous. And fans, fans should should pick up. You know what? They're going to show how angry they are because there are going to be a lot of fans disguised as empty seats at these stupid regionals where they want they they that Bruce Pearl he's right Auburn got screwed because they went to Birmingham last year as a nine seed but look at Legacy Arena last year they packed it oh. in Birmingham is one of the greatest cities in America when it comes to hosting a big time event yeah and you're going to Spokane Washington I mean Auburn fans are all over the country there's a lot in the Silicon Valley. And Kevin Skarbinski was on here yesterday. You can get tickets round trip for eight nine hundred dollars uh, from Birmingham, but their fans can be going from all over the country. This yeah. this committee is a joke, and they're why the NCAA needs to be evaporated. They are yep. combat ineffective, and they are they are just they're they're clueless. They're, they're cl- and- the committee didn't watch the tournaments on Sunday. They didn't. They lied. They did not. Because that stuff matters. If they don't, if they're going to play the games, make them matter. Yeah, and you know, Rob, the the thing about I know we're going to talk about basketball. I do want to bring up one more thing about the selection committee. Uh, you know, there's them putting Kentucky as a three seed playing in Pittsburgh. I mean, yeah. I am, am I watching the same Kentucky team that the committee is? This is a Kentucky team that basically, I mean, got blown off the map by Texas A and M because Texas A and M. Outplayed them on defense. They outplayed them on offense. Uh, Buzz Williams outcoached John Calipari. I mean, I was there in Nashville. I was literally sitting across from the Texas A&M bench watching the game. Kentucky gets a three seed. They get to play four and a half, five hours from campus uh, in in Pittsburgh uh, against a very favorable draw. But really, truthfully, guys, I think uh, Kentucky's going to lose in the second round to NC State. NC State is on a terror right now. And I hate... I'd hate to play those guys, man. They're fun to watch. Um, you know, in, in Mississippi State, I, I want to talk about Mississippi State. They play. They would play North Carolina. They have to get by Tom Izzo first, and, and I think this is not the Michigan State where they're, you know, big, they're physical. This is a Michigan State team that has struggled to find an identity all season. They don't really have a set way of playing basketball. Uh, we're going to write that in the article sometime today or tomorrow. Um, so this Mississippi State team, they get by Tom Izzo. They match up well against North Carolina. North Carolina plays very similar to what Tennessee does. They like to get out and the they like to get out, like to score and transition. They like to fast break. They like to play fast. They're not a very overly physical team. They've got uh, Bascott down low, who's not a very physical big. I you know I think Mississippi State matches up well with North Carolina uh, with DJ and Cameron Matthews and uh, Jimmy Bell. I think that those guys match up with well with the Carolina bigs. The guard play, you got to go in favor of Josh Hubbard, uh, you know, uh, Shaquille Moore. Then you've also got Tolan Smith down low. So Mississippi State has the advantage until they reach, you know, Sweet 16, uh, Elite 8 level where they'll possibly play play in Alabama. So a lot of excitement for Mississippi State right now, a lot of excitement uh, for Florida. I think Florida's coming to this tournament with a whole lot of momentum. Uh, I think they're going to be playing for the for the kids. I like their schedule. I mean, (laughs) yeah, yeah, I don't either, but they're playing, they're playing with a lot of momentum. You know, they're playing for the kid who got hurt uh, in the Auburn game. I haven't heard exactly what was – I think the bone kind of protruded from the skin a little bit. So that was a – called a compound fracture there, Elvis. Yeah. Yeah. That was bad. That yeah, was bad. And, but, uh, I mean, I, I think they said the surgery last night. I asked your dad last night on the Buddy Martin show, catch it weeknights, 9 p.m. live on YouTube. And I asked – and friends and Buddy and I think Shane Matthews was on then. I think he had a good surgery. It went well. And now the rehab process will start. If anybody ever cheers when a player goes down injured, I don't care what team it is, oh. you're sick in the head. Okay. Least, but I, I don't think anybody did. But I think that those two teams, there's a lot of respect. You got Todd Golden, who's very close to Bruce Pearl. I'm pulling for, look, I'm pulling for the SEC, but I'm harder on Auburn than I am any other school. But this time I'm going to defend them. They, they, you know, but you know what they need to do? You know what your best revenge is? Success. And yeah. stick it in the committee's face. But they need to be excoriated, raked over the coals, ridiculed, humiliated, lambasted. And all their, they, their email addresses, you know, let people start <laughs> carpet bombing them, especially yeah. when you're paying. Look, if you're taking your family 
out there to Spokane to see Auburn, let's say you're from Atlanta or you're from Memphis, yeah. you could spend five or seven thousand dollars. Yeah, it would have been nice to be able to come. Hey, I think in Memphis we can put on one hell of an event. I yeah. know Kevin Kane, the head of the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Kevin is a machine. He will put stuff. He will make it happen. You know that. I love Memphis. Would love to have had Auburn or Alabama or, or Samford or UAB. I mean, it would have been a draw. A and M doesn't. You're right. Doesn't care about basketball. They just don't. Yeah. Nothing and, against and Texas A and M. It's a great school. They don't care, and they've got a tough group of players. Yeah, and, and you know it's not a knock on Texas A and I'm I'm excited to play them. Texas A and M has possibly one of the greatest bands in the SEC. They are some of the most fun people to be around. Yes, that's all to them. I think it was. Oh gosh, I was losing track of days. Friday, Saturday, they were whatever. They, they were having so much fun, man. I went over to the band. I was sitting over, you know, near the visiting side, and I was like, guys, I love y'all, man. I fell in love with y'all last year. Y'all are always just so much fun. They wear the turkey heads for turnovers on the top of their heads, and uh, was that A and M? Yeah, A and M. They wear literal like stuffed turkey heads. Yeah. On the top of the for for turnovers with Buzz Williams and uh, they, I'm, uh, I'm gonna leave that. Yeah, that, that, that if that's not cultish. <laughs> that is not cultish. I don't know. You're not wrong. We sacrificed a turkey head beforehand, and then we <laughs> hey, stuff it, I, I'm and then we wear it on our head. Why? Because it's a yeah. basketball game, duh. They, and you're, <laughs> look, a lot of people think a lot of these ghouls are cult. Like look, look, A&M, 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 A&M people. Love their school. They they yeah. anytime you got an ag and engineering program as strong as Auburn or A and M or Mississippi State, that just pulls people in like it's it's a magnet. But 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 basketball wise, them coming to Memphis, they're not going to draw people. No, and, and Alabama, Houston might. Al, let me tell you something. Alabama, the campus Tuscaloosa is three and a half hours from Memphis. That's with traffic. It's an easy trip. There are a lot of Alabama people, a lot of Auburn people in Memphis. Yeah. And they'll they'll pull for UAB just because of that rivalry. And Gene Bartow, yeah. you know, the four years, he got more out of being at Memphis for four years than any coach has ever done in four years. He is still yeah. posthumously, rest his soul, loved in Memphis. And, look, I, you know what? The committee, they blew it this year. They no. completely and, – and Kentucky has no business being the three seed. Mitch, answer this. Five you are defense. who you are at this point in the season. You're not going to change. Now, they can outscore people, but they don't play defense. Well, you know, Coach, bite Cal, in the butt. Coach Cal said something. I think it was Sunday. He said that he was going to make another tweak and maybe start both seven-footers at the same time. I'm like, if you want to start both seven-footers, that's your – that's whatever – but you're not going to score a lot of points. You're just not. I mean, I, I don't – you are who you are in the season. So that's why when I filled up my bracket, I, I you did. You did your bracket? I, like, I did. I have my bracket done. As of right now, I've got Auburn winning the sure. national championship. I, I I love this Auburn team. I love how complete they are. I All love right. what Bruce Pearl has done with them. Um, I've got Mississippi State playing in the lead eight. Uh, losing eventually, I have to look at the exact brackets. But I've got Mississippi State in the uh, in the lead eight. I've got UConn losing early to oh gosh, let me look. <laughs> uh, don't have well, the they play. I'm looking at now. UConn plays Stetson, and then FAU plays Northwestern. So that's going to be probably. I think I had UConn losing to FAU because I yeah. I, I watched that U that FAU team. Man, I've seen them play. Team. Yeah. Dusty mm-hmm. May is stupid, man. He's he is yeah. a darn good basketball coach. He gets the most out of his players. Um, so you got UConn going down to FAU. Wow, that's yes. big. I've got UConn yeah. losing. I don't, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I could buy that. You don't. You don't <clears> want to. You don't put some money on it, Brendan. No, nah, not that one. How about <laughs> a six pack of a six pack of crystals, Brendan? Oh yeah. See, <laughs> but you know what? Though, what sucks about living in Ocala? Is it's a great city, Nothing. but they don't have crystal down there, and they don't have <laughs> crystal. <laughs> Do they, do they have yeah, crystal burgers? They do in, in Ocala. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're in Florida. I don't know if there's. I thought there was, but I don't know. I can't eat them. They hurt me. But, but just be. <laughs> I was gonna say, be honest. When was the last time you had a steamer? Oh, pack? I mean, you, I don't look, know. I don't care. 
It, it, usually when you're pretty liquored up at three in the morning, yeah, when you hit crystals, you know, you know, you're a junkie when you hit them sober for lunch. <laughs> I mean, that's Ooh, just that's hung over. Let me read a little. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to read. Straight hangover. Me, hey, I'm going to tell you what one of my favorite people, Doug Dean, who's on regular, he's a team member, one of our founding members on this show, like Mitch is. He put some great, and I'll just paraphrase it because, as Niedermeyer said when uh, addressing the charges against. Delta Tall Delta in Animal House at the Interfraternity Council meeting. The decorum prohibits me reading, but I'll do my best. So he says, uh, duck the selection committee, making Auburn a four seed with the toughest region. UConn and that AU game in Boston with 18,000 Huskies and 2,000 Auburn fans. Greg Burns should explain this bull split. Bammer gets the easiest region with North Carolina. Uh, I, I agree. You know, the, and and there is a there is a hatred by this cabal of bitter old rotten yeah. people that smell like mothballs because that's the last time they were relevant when they put their clothes on. Their cl- because they, they have mothball smell around them. They don't like Bruce Pearl, and I'm sick of this because he got he's a, he allegedly turned in a coach at Illinois when he was on the staff with Dr. Tom Davis at Iowa. So what? Okay. Oh, there's a, there's a, you know, there's an honor among thieves. I'm no, if he, he did what he did. Okay. I know it, Tennessee. Oh my God. You know, he was out of town. He screwed up. There was a, there was a player. I think it was Aaron Kraft who went on to play for Ohio state. I know his neighbors that live across the fence from him in Knoxville. They told me, they said he screwed up. They had, they, they went over to his house, cooked out, you know, cooked burgers. And he lied when he was asked about it. And that's what he screwed up on. Otherwise, he probably would have been suspended for five games. But you know what? Find me a Tennessee fan that wouldn't take Bruce Pearl back in a heartbeat. Find me people that love a school. And uh, there has never been in Auburn history a fundraiser like Bruce Pearl. I mean, love the guy. His players love him, and I hope they win it all. And I mean, and just I, I hope that committee – they have an agenda. You've got to keep your personal politics and, 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 and dislikes of people out of it, or you have no damn business being on the committee. Shame on these people. And they, they didn't just screw it, but it's what they did. Greg Byrne, what planet were you, are you from? Come on. Go ahead. You know, uh, guys, uh, and I have to get off here in a few minutes here, but I, I do want to say wait, being around Wait a yeah. minute. This is fun. I I got I, I gotta get to work, y'all. I gotta get. I, know. I gotta I gotta hop on the I gotta hop on the full time. But you know, one thing that I did notice this weekend in Nashville is how Craig Sankey is slowly killing college athletics. I I am not a. I used to be a Craig Sankey fan, but you it's know, Craig. Yeah, Craig Sankey. I, Sankey. Uh, you call him Craig? Okay, okay. Commissioner like Sankey. So Commissioner Sankey. I mean, his stance on basketball. <laughs> um, his stance on basketball is stupid. I you know. Taking away opportunities. He wants to take away opportunities from UAB and Indiana State. Take away automatic bids from uh, these non-Power 2 conferences to give to more SEC teams. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you. As much as I would love to cover Ole Miss in the NCAA tournament or LSU, they would not be fun to have either one of those teams in the NCAA tournament this year. It just wouldn't. And really, truthfully, guys, to be honest with you, Indiana State deserved to be in the NCAA tournament over – half teams that would let in on the last last eight side of this uh because indiana state man look at what their look what the record is look at who they beat you're gonna punish them because they lost they had a bad game in the conference championship game I, i'm just not a fan of what commissioner sankey and the big ten are doing i wish uh, you know what break off football do let football do its own thing but leave alone basketball leave alone baseball and let those entities do its own thing because the NCAA tournament, we should not be expanding this tournament. We should not be adding more teams to it. We should not be taking automatic qualifiers because the NCAA tournament, y'all, is beautiful. It is the best, purest way how to find a true national championship. You've got 68 teams with the same shot. Everybody has the same opportunity right. to go out there and win a national championship. 68 teams over a three-week period have the chance to go compete for a national championship. And Craig Sankey wants to take away that 
from the smaller schools. And I just don't, you know, you wouldn't, according to Commissioner Sankey, you wouldn't have had an FAU last year playing for Final Four. You wouldn't have had San Diego State playing for a national championship. Butler competing for a national championship in 2000, yeah. 2010. So, to me, Commissioner Sankey needs to take a step back. I wish we could bring back the days of Mike Slog. I wish when the SEC could go back to the original 12. I wish the Big 12 was still the Big 12 or the Big 8. I wish the Pac-12 was still around. The ACC was still the ACC. Adding Stanford and Cal and SMU. My dad and I were talking about this on the way down to Nashville. We don't even know who the hell is going to be in the ACC next year. I mean, you're looking at Stanford, Cal, and SMU adding to the ACC. That doesn't make any lick of sense. I wish Memphis would get in the conference with maybe the Sun Belt with an emphasis on better football home games. I mean, Memphis is having yeah. to play next year in football. Rice, North Texas, Charlotte. I, you know, those games don't really mean much. And if you were Memphis, mm. wouldn't you re- much rather be in the Sun Belt where you're playing better basketball competition, where you're playing football that is playing Arkansas State, Southern Miss, uh, let's see here, who App State, Coastal Carolina, Marshall, teams that you have a geographical rivalry to that you were playing in the old conference USA, maybe even add Western Kentucky to that mix. So I, I just – I firsthand witness this weekend – you know, how upset and how disappointing uh, Commissioner Sankey and Jim, uh, whatever the commissioner of the Big Ten's name is, how disappointing I am in those guys trying to ruin college athletics for the rest of us. Because what makes college athletics so special, guys, is the the regional rivalries exactly. that we have. And, you know, what's uh, you know the thing about it is, yeah, adding Texas and Oklahoma and Mizzou and A&M was great. That's, you know, going to add to the level of competition. But really, truthfully, guys, when you know, let's say Mississippi State goes play and goes plays Texas this year in football, I'm not going to have any ties to that game whatsoever compared to when Mississippi State goes plays Arkansas or goes to play Florida or goes to play South Carolina. It's just not that those ties. And next year for the the SEC tournament, we're going to have four games on Wednesday for the bottom eight teams. I, it's just not. It, it's not exciting. It's just not. It, college athletics right now, Commissioner Sankey, the Big Ten commissioner, I, you know, I, I know that we probably can't fire him, and that's fine. But there has to be somebody in, in another back room, an AD with a backbone. Maybe it's, you know, Mitch Barnhart or uh, Zach Selman or somebody like that with a backbone and says, hey, John Cohen could be that guy and says, hey, look, n- enough is enough. And we got we to gotta chill this thing out because expanding the college football playoffs to 14 teams, What's the point? Like, I get 12. I get, I understand eight, but 14, what's the point? What's the money, point of adding money, 14? Money, 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 money. Yeah. It, it, it yeah. Money, money is, uh, there's a great proverb, Roman proverb. Money is like salt water. The more yeah. you drink of it, the more you got to have it. And and I'm with you. I, I, I love this tournament because I love to see every school feel like they have a chance. And you can say realistically, no, they don't. Well, I'm in sales. I don't believe in being realistic. I believe I'm going to get every sale I go after. Yeah. You know what? You better believe that. You better believe it. And 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 I don't like this. I don't like this narrative from six multinational corporations on three city blocks in New York that from the time you wake up in the morning till your time your head hits the pillow or you pass out drunk, they want to tell you what to think and how to think and when to do it. I mean, yeah. let's go back to the free market. Let's let the free market look. I didn't, as an SEC guy, I didn't want to see Kentucky get beat by St. Peter's, but that was pretty cool for the average fan out there. It sucked for Kentucky. It shouldn't have happened. But that's what people are talking about right now. And, yeah. Mitch, let me just read you Doug Dean's Final Four real quick. Auburn, Arizona, Wisconsin, and Creighton. And he's got Auburn beating Wisconsin for the national championship. Wouldn't that See, be I have wild. Auburn beating Creighton. I have Auburn beating Creighton. I love. What's your final four? Give Mitch? me your final four, Mitch. Hold on, I screenshot it. Let me pull it up on my phone. And and, and hey hey, uh, Brendan, if you would put up Doug Dean's final four, I love that. Uh, Auburn, Arizona, Creighton, Wisconsin. I have uh, Auburn, Arizona, Houston, and Creighton. Auburn beating Creighton in the national championship. So me and me and Doug are like, we got three, we got three out of the four. I kind of, I kind of like my uh, company with Doug Dean now. I, hey, I, look, I you make me feel better. Here's the thing: when you pick these games, I use like I pick stocks. 
I look for deep discount value. I look at trends. I look at 200-day moving averages. I look at net rankings, offense and defense. You know, yeah. the exact opposite of what the selection committee did. You know, they didn't look at anything. They were told what to do by somebody more powerful than them, TV executives, and that's what they did. Okay? But the tournament and life, karma, have a way of winning out. Mitch, unbelievable what you are doing. I am so damn impressed. And, Brendan, you got to love this guy. 27 years old, works his ass off. You went to every game at the SEC tournament. You went to every press conference. You weren't afraid to ask questions. Uh, you made all kinds of contacts and relationships. Remember, get their card first before you give them yours. Then you control that relationship. Rule number one, Barry Blackburn told me about in sales or anything like that. Get their card first. Give out five of your cards every day. Two of the people will probably keep them. Two of them will probably give them to somebody else. One of them they might throw away. You never know. But you're going to miss a 1,000% of the shots that you never take. Mitch, let them know how they can there follow you. Go, you. Love having you on this show. Yeah, guys, thank you all for having me. The Mitch Davis Show.com, Mitch Davis underscore eight on Twitter. And Mitch Dave, the Mitch Davis Show on uh, Spotify, on Apple, all those kind of places. So <laughs> check it out. I'm going to be in Memphis on Thursday for the open practices with Texas A&M. Uh, and then, of course, all the action in, in the 901 starts on Friday. So I'll be covering this. Yeah, let's yeah. up. What, yeah, was your fi- up what was your final four again? I didn't hear the, yeah. the, the uh, four. Let's see here. It is, as of right now, Auburn, Arizona, Houston, and Creighton, with Auburn beating Creighton in the national championship game. So that's uh, as of right now. And it, they'll probably change before Thursday. You but here. that's that's <laughs> – that's where we're going with this. So yeah, thank right. y'all so much. Y'all have a great day. I appreciate y'all. Hell All yeah. Right, you do too, Mitch. Thank you. Thank you, right. Mitch. Yancey Porter ought to be on here with us. Uh, not in yet. Just a moment. Well, I, think I just, I said, they're not here yet, but I was just curious because I was looking at the brackets and with Mitch, I got the app and, you know, uh, March Madness live app, which is not too bad this year. Uh, look at the brackets and it's just, it, you know, I was talking to you this about before at the beginning of the show. It's just so bizarre to me. I mean, besides location and regional and everything else, but when you just look at like Florida loses in the SEC <laughs> tournament uh, and the, to Auburn, but they get a buy. <laughs> you know, Florida's Florida's path to the at least Sweet Sixteen or to uh, the Elite Eight. It's not too bad because uh, Kentucky's not that good, and they kind of uh, got their number. Or the you know, or no, they played the winner of Marquette and Western Kentucky uh, after the bye. Yeah, and they're and they're and they lost to Auburn, but Auburn starts out with Yale, no bye. Yeah. They get you know, and they get a much more difficult path in a sense that you get an extra game. So I don't know. It's just sort of baffling to me. Not that I mean, look, I'm happy. Well, for wait, Florida, you're talking about but, buys. Yeah. Well, I mean, Florida play. What day does Florida open up? So there's, so Florida doesn't play. Let's see. This, the app Are they Thursday up. or Friday? I'm looking right now. The app's not so super functional when you open up the deal. So it says first round is two. Let's see, three twenty one and three twenty two. So they don't play. They don't have it listed. On See, you, 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 they take 32 teams play Thursday and 32 play Friday. Right, exactly. But then Florida's got – they don't have their matchup because they've got yeah. Florida. Ain't no buys. That's, uh, no, they, I'm not a buy, but I'm yeah. saying Florida gets, you know so, – so Oh, an extra day of rest. Extra day saying. of rest. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a – But they got so, screwed in a lot. Yeah, they need uh, – uh, let's see, Tennessee plays St. Peter's. Then Texas doesn't play that day. And then Akron, Creighton, Oregon, South Carolina. I mean, that's a no-brainer. But, I mean, but location there. Where are they playing that game? Well, Kansas, you're Stanford, t- Gonzaga, McNeese. Okay, so that whole division. All right. It's just gets to uh, – I mean, the, a lot of this stuff to me comes down to like endurance and what you got. I mean, look, you come off a pretty nasty SEC tournament. You come off a pretty, you know, like you got a bad injury. It, it's it's really just like getting through this gauntlet. But you know, I think I'd rather have Florida's chances on that schedule than I would Auburn. And I think it been, you know, I think Auburn 
goes and wins the whole uh, SEC tournament. And, you know, I don't know. Well, Florida's playing in Indianapolis. Yeah. I mean. So look, there'll be that, nobody there. You know, they'll, they'll be people there. But what, what, what the committee is supposed to do, and, and I'm No, curious, but I'm saying Gators are, I mean, that's a long way to travel. They're not going to yeah. have the biggest. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I, I will say this. Uh, Yancey Porter supposed to join us here in just a moment from Rebel Yell Hotline. Um, and I, I, I like that. Look, the committee, you, you can't reward teams that aren't worth being rewarded. But when you take a team uh, that should be like a three or a two, that winning the conference tournament has to matter. OK, well, that's, because that's, it, here's and, why. And if I think give, it needs to matter in, in both in, in football, baseball, I mean, all the way down the line, you know, because it, it makes it such a huge difference, especially in football. Yeah. But in, in the fact that they give an automatic NCAA bid to the tournament winner, they don't give it automatically to the regular season champion, but mm -hmm. they give it automatically to the tournament winner. Then, damn it, shame on the committee for not paying attention. In this case, it, it, it helped Auburn, but it could have helped Florida. And Florida, had Florida won it, they would have won four games in four days. In four that days. should have bumped their seeding up. I mean, I'm agnostic about this stuff. I want the SEC teams to be in there in the best position they can be done the right way. I don't want to see somebody get screwed, but when your own people, you know, there's a point where you you, you – Look, if if your kids, if you're coaching your kids' teams when they're young, uh, you got to be careful as a parent not to play mommy ball and daddy ball. Keep yeah. politics out of it. Yeah. Stay out of politics at work. Stay in production. And I'm talking about the politics of who likes who and who does this and that. I'm not talking about Republican, Democrat, because that's just a dump anyway. I'm talking about doing things right. And, and put people on these committees that know what they're talking about, that know. I mean, Dr. Charles McClellan, commissioner of the Southwest Athletic Conference. I don't know. Uh, I don't know him. But, you know, give a better reason when, when you've got teams that are ranked in the top four and five in the net and the Palmer, you know, we, all we hear about is ESPN just drives it down your throat it's, from the first game. Yeah. Bracketology. It right. means nothing. Nothing. It means nothing. Look, UConn. UConn will have secret service protection throughout well, this tournament. And, and you're going to have to beat it, them and the refs and the politics of the TV people. It's, it's the same reason when you turn on any morning network morning show that it's geared – completely towards you know living in new york living in these yeah. same areas yeah because yes. that's that's their demo right so they're after that greater period so it's like you know you you watch a morning show that literally has nothing to do with you know with your area or, what, or what's happening so it's like the center of the universe is there and i think that's you know what we see because we see ratings drive all of our uh all the decisions because it's all money it's like you know and i think that's you know, that that is why I do what I do now, and that's why you do what you do now. Is that you want to give an opportunity to take a break from ESPN national news? Uh, that you want to talk uh, hyper local. That you want to get in to talk to the pe people that we talk to on this show all the time. That people that cover the beat that's there that understand. You know, uh, you know that uh, there is a world outside of the Northeast uh, yeah, and their ratings. Well, I remember they had the the sports reporters on Sunday mornings, and on that's ESPN. where they make the, and that's where the decisions were made. And that's my yeah. point: is that is that it's not it's it's that that's where the that's the brain of this whole thing, and I well, think that's what we find subject to. Yeah, and it's frustrating because you got a bunch of people in Boston and New York that, yeah. for the most part, grew up playing stickball, uh, and they you know they they most of them in these big cities they ride the subway, they don't drive. They don't have a truck. When it's I had an opportunity to live in, I had an opportunity right out of college to live in New York and work for CBS and ESPN for a six month internship. I didn't do it because there weren't any horses up there other than the carriages in Central Park. There weren't any pickup trucks and gun racks in those pickup trucks. I didn't feel like I'm from the South. I've traveled all over this country and all over the world. I wouldn't swap being where I'm from for anything. I'm going to tell you something. We need to put people in man camp. 
learn how to clean a fish, gut a deer, clean a duck, split firewood, build a fire, change a tire, and open the door for ladies and stand mm -hmm. up at the table when ladies sit down and when they leave. How about that? What a novel idea. I'm going to tell you something. Brendan, you are right. You've got, a, you've got the, these morning show people that live in New York. They're so insulated from the rest of the country. And, 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 they, and they, they try to talk about sports. I mean, give me a break. The committees I, I just, blew it. They, they, yeah. they, but this isn't the first time they've done it. No, and, you, they've been, you, and it's been happening. I mean, the, yeah. we, it's this time of year, whether it's football or whether it's ba you know uh, basketball or whatever it is, it's like somebody is getting screwed because clearly the system is flawed. But in – in the flaws of the whole thing is where this whole thing exists. That's where it's yeah. always existed. And I think what you see with adding four, you know, having fourteen uh, uh, playoff games, uh, you know, a uh, fourteen team, excuse me. Then why got, two more? Yeah, now you have two more, right? Yeah. So now, but then you start to think about the connection of that entire time of year in a lot of ways. It's like, well, remember we used to have the Weed Whacker Bowl and all the, yeah. you know, all these different no name bowl games. Why did we have those? Because of the money, right? Because the universities got that big payout to to end up at 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 you know the the you know rack of ribs bowl. Yeah. Let me throw this at you. My friend Harold Grader is executive vice president. <laughs> Uh, of the AutoZone Liberty Bowl in Memphis. The last 22 years, they've averaged around 58000 a year at the Liberty Bowl. Let's keep them around. They're probably the seventh best bowl. They've yeah. been around a long time. You know what they yeah. used to do back when there weren't all these 44 bowls like there are now? They were brilliant. ABC Monday Night Football. They were the following Monday, the week after the NFL regular season ended. So you had a built-in audience already – staged, ready to go. We The bowl games that are not drawing anybody and are being subsidized by the government or whatever, eliminate them. We don't need them. You don't reward people. Look, if, Brendan, if your daughter were a freshman at the University of Florida, and I'm sure she's very smart knowing you and your dad and your mom was very smart, uh, and she worked hard and got a 4.0 her first semester, and her roommate was the life of the party and got a 1.0. Well, let's say your daughter comes home and goes, I got my grades. I thought I got a 4.0. Well, the way it works now, honey, is we took your roommate who went out every night and didn't study. They're 1.0. We, we added it into your 4.0, and the two of y'all have a 2.5. That's the kind of crap we've got to eliminate. You know what? Sua sponte. You know what that means in Latin, the translation? I don't. Of your own accord, of your own volition. And that's, yeah. you know, hang around people who believe in creeds like that. And, and what the problem is, we don't have enough sports writers like your dad out there now. Franz Beard. I mean, you, you pick them. Tony Barnhart. They're writing about what matters. And you know what? You can agree to disagree with people. Doesn't mean you can't speak to them. But we got to stop getting away from it. But how dare if anybody were to call on one of these ESPN shows and rip into ESPN or any of the TV people about what they do is purely, and I understand it, but is it is it about competition? Last year, I remember a few people telling me, this is bad for TV having Florida Atlantic and San Diego State in the Final Four. I'm like, who the hell says that? It's the people that live in New York that, that spend their weekends out in the Hamptons or in Hyenas Port or Cape Cod or Martha's Vineyard. I don't really care about those people. I don't want to. I mean, that's fine if you like. They're a bunch of hypocrites. We're we know Rodney or checking in right here. Yeah. Uh, this came in. Hey, Rodney, how are you? This, this man ain't no hypocrite. This man is as real as it gets. Proud doing, native well, son. How are you? Mobile, Alabama, Corpus Christi, Rodney Orr. How are you doing, man? We're doing. We're talking about that selection committee. And what's going on in just the, the politics of ESPN and the TV networks, how these people that, that don't drive, that take the subway, that, that live this fantasy life, try to act like they relate to the rest of America when it comes to college football, when it comes to anything. And now you see with the selection committee, you got Auburn and Alabama and UAB. Like Kevin Skarbinski said yesterday, Rodney, 
We can't even get Alabama and UAB together in the same building in the state of Alabama. By God, they're, they're going to be sh sharing practice time in Spokane, Washington. Uh, the humanity of it all, Rodney. Make some sense out of it. Uh, I can't. I can't. Uh, it's, it's, it's not possible. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, you know, I, I honestly, Rod, I haven't put a lot of It is kind of crazy, but at the same time, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't know what all went into it. I honestly, there's so many different things I'm on my plate that, uh, uh, that, to be honest with you, that's kind of the last thing I've thought about. Uh, I, you know, so I would probably be not the best person to, to ask that. No, but let me ask you this about football right now. Spring practice is underway at Alabama. Kalen DeBoer's first year. He kept a few guys. Who, let's go back over it just to refresh people because I got a question here from somebody that texted me. Who did Kalen DeBoer keep? I know he kept Freddie Roach. Who was the other coach that he kept from the previous staff? Yeah, Robert Gillespie, uh, the running backs coach. Um, so, yeah, those two were holdovers. And then, of course, he brought most of his staff from Washington on the offensive side. And then, of course, Ryan Grubb left along with Mike uh, Scott Huff, the uh, offensive line coach. So, uh, you know, those guys left, went to Seattle. and But he still has basically, you know, guys that on that side of the ball that he's coached with and defensively. He's coached with Kane Womack, too. So yeah, uh, he's pretty familiar with most of his staff. But those were the two holdovers, Freddie Roach on the defensive line and Robert Gillespie at running backs. You have been so far ahead – of the curve, and uh, this is Rodney Orr, Tyler Insider, folks, only $48 a year on the May Veterinary Clinic, Tuscaloosa and Northport since 1964. Two locations open every day, Sundays, drop off and pick up only 3 to 5 p.m. Camp May Veterinary Clinic. They have an outdoor pool and even have connecting cat condos. And Rodney, you've written a great book, Bigger Than Bama. QR code is up on the screen. We'll keep it up there. Uh, you're you're a hell of a man, and you know Alabama. You understand the big picture of what happens in Tuscaloosa reverberates around the country. Let's talk about the guys coming and going. Uh, do you feel like I do that as soon as spring practice is over, that's another uh, mess you got to deal with? How many of your guys are going to hit the portal the first week of May? Isn't it is is anything being done and and can also Rodney can you clarify something if you transfer the first time you're eligible immediately unless you're a graduate but if you want to transfer the second time did did the courts put a temporary restraining order or something that said instead of you the second time you transfer you got to sit for a year did they come out and say you, you can transfer as much as you want every year. What's, what's the latest on that mess? <laughs> they don't have any rules. <laughs> so, so the remember they had the deal temporarily. It was going to be yeah. the second time. So, yeah, I mean, right. This, yeah, this is. Yeah, no, it's, I, I don't, I don't think they're going to, they're going to stop anyone if they want to transfer a second time. I mean, not right now. Uh, now it may eventually happen. I, I, of course, like you said, it used to be, well, we know how it used to be, but yeah. then in recent times with the portal, uh, you got the one transfer and then the other one you had to sit out if you wanted to take a second transfer. You had to sit out a year, but that, that really hasn't been enforced. And um, so I, I think that's pretty weak right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the spring portal opens. I think it actually, Rob, I think it actually opens like the Monday after Alabama's A-Day game. Um, yeah, mid April sometime. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm expecting some activity, definitely expecting some activity, not in just Alabama, obviously, but around the country. Well, as the late legendary voice of the Mississippi state Bulldogs, Jack Crystal would say, there's movement in the aisles here in Scott field in Starkville, <laughs> Mississippi. <laughs> Remember him, Rodney? I do remember him. Yeah, he was he was great. I think I think a lot of that movement. I don't mean to 
in Mississippi State people with people flooding out of that stadium. <laughs> Rob, <laughs> yeah. I, I know, I know. I, I, I remember, Rob, that uh, I went to the, I covered the 1986, uh, just a little throwback here. You'll like this one, Rob. Yeah. I covered the 1986 uh, Auburn uh, Mississippi State game at Scott Field. I mean, they were that was as high as I think they've ever been. Not, I, was I mean, there. not uh, to that point, obviously. Yeah. But they were sky high, Rocky Felker, and all that stuff. And yeah, I think Brent Fullwood took the first play about eighty-eight yards, and and it was You're over. Correct, sir. <laughs> uh, Rodney, that was a crazy game, wasn't it? I mean, Scott Field, and remember Don Hamilton was the quarterback for. He was State. from Hamilton, Don. Uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about, but yeah, Don Smith. He was from yeah. he was from not, Hamilton, Mississippi. Yeah, but not Don Cornelius, but Don Smith. Yeah, Don Smith from <laughs> yeah. Hamilton. Yeah, but remember he, yeah. he he made that long run at Neyland Stadium up in Knoxville. Yeah, that yeah, won the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, Rodney, he was he was a great guy. He was a great great kid. You know, after the game, I was in the uh, the Auburn. I guess. Well, the, all that was left was Pat Dye was putting on his shoes and socks, and Paul Feinbaum was standing there. I'll never forget. But anyway, um, he was that that day. Penn State could come to Tuscaloosa in a big matchup. Penn State was like number two, and Alabama was like number four. And Penn State dominated twenty three to three. And I just remember Dye looking up at uh, Paul Feinbaum and saying, "Paul, you put the hex on Bama. I love it." Because uh, <laughs> Feinbaum had written an article saying that Penn State was basically Notre Dame in, in white, you know, because Notre yeah. Dame obviously wasn't very good that year. Yeah. But anyway, long story short, I asked Coach Dye, I said, Coach, I said, in the Mississippi State locker room, they're saying Brent Fullwood is a better running back than Bo Jackson. And he said, well, he probably is. Bo's not a running back. He's a <clears throat> center fielder. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I remember that game quite well. 35 to 6, the Tigers got the win. And uh, I met my parents, literally had flown back. They'd been in Europe for three weeks. I met them in, in Starkville that night for the game, drove back with some friends, stopped in Tuscaloosa at about 2.30 that morning at guess where, Crystal. I got a uh, box of grenades. Got a got a got a box of grenades uh, with shrapnel. That's crystal burgers with onions, and so a box of fuses, French fries, and a bowl of mud, some chili. But uh, Rodney, I didn't know that you had covered. And Buddy Martin's on here, GatorbackMedia.com, legendary, one of the original skywriters in the SEC. And I love talking about these great games from the past. And and also several people, and I'm included, Rodney. I wish we could get your picture up here. When you're on, because, hell, you're a good-looking guy. We see you on TV all the time, WVUA TV 23, Tider Insider TV Tuesday nights at 630 with you and Gary Harris. But uh, love having you on here. But, uh, Rodney, I got to say, I did not know you were a beat writer. Who were you writing for? No, no, no. I worked at, I worked at a TV station in Jackson. Okay. And yeah. actually, I covered okay. – and I'm sure Buddy will remember this game. It might have been the same year. I um, can't remember. Rocky Felker's first year, I'm pretty sure it was, Florida. Kerwin Bell brought Florida to uh, Scott Field, and Mississippi State pulled off an upset. Uh, I, I don't remember if that was the same year or not, but I remember Mississippi State pulled off an upset. Yeah, now, uh, good evening to you. How you doing, uh, Ryan? Well. Nice talking well, to you and you Rob too. and Brendan. Yeah, I was, I, I was living in New York at the time, so I didn't really cover that game, but I do remember it, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Mississippi State was a tough out a lot of times in those days with Florida, you know? And, yeah. And, uh, so, and even Spurrier had his moments. But, yeah, so I'm glad I got you on here, Rodney, because I want to clear up some history while I'm okay. at it. If I may, Rob, just jump in. Absolutely. I was thinking about Keith Dunham's book. Yes. The mm -hmm. Missing Ring, okay? And I know you know that story, Rodney, and, and I've forgotten the year because all the years run together after that. 66. Many. 66 was the same year that Utah won – the national championship beat Kentucky in basketball the same year that Steve Spurrier won the Heisman Trophy, and I thought it was. But the big deal was is that Alabama had one of its greatest teams that did not get the national championship because mm -hmm. the polls decided that then, and most of the polls were run by people from other from up north and out west and east. And so somebody made a value judgment, apparently, that uh, 
you know, that, that, that team that was racist shouldn't be a national champion. And so Brian got screwed out of the ring. But I think it's an interesting concept because I was thinking back about this, guys, that looking at Florida's history, there were a couple of missing rings from Florida for different reasons, too. So, you know, you got to ask the question, is it right for somebody to say, well, you don't deserve to win a national championship any more than you do to say you shouldn't win the Heisman Trophy. I get O.J. Simpson, but uh, but Bush should, should never have lost his. Anyway, it's uh, moral judgments, Rob, that come into play like that, which I'm not a big fan of. Yeah, I'm not either. Rodney and, and Yancey Porter is going to join us here now, Rebel Yell Hotline over in Oxford. I got to say, I want to get Keith Donovan on this show in a big way, Rodney, because mm -hmm. he's the historian of ESPN College football now. But mm -hmm. his – voice it's kind of when you watch him on these documentaries y'all are all old enough to remember y'all remember an, an actor who was a great voice hal holbrook i oh, remember yeah. the name oh, yeah yeah, yeah famous In actor. Yeah. incredible voice he did he played mark twain you probably saw he uh rodney he narrated the lewis and clark trail movies and, and narratives on national geographic um keith Dunham has a way of telling stories that makes you hang on every word. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've, and, and he was right though, uh, that the South has never let go of what happened when Alabama went to the Rose Bowl and won that game. It wasn't just a victory for Alabama, it was for all of the South. And the South, like a, like a pit bull putting its teeth into the hide of, a, of an animal, you know, they've never let go. And that's why it's so personal. Don't you agree, Rodney, in the South? And, and I'll, Yancey, come in here in a second. But it's so personal with us in the South, our teams, especially college football. Yeah, I mean, I think so. I mean, I think it's obviously, you know, what makes it, certainly the root of it could be that what you're referring to. And, uh, and I actually mentioned that in, in the, my, my book about what that win meant for the South, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, there was, uh, there's a lot of, you talk about that 1966 team, Alabama had won it in 64 and 65. That would have been a, a three-peat, you know? They went 11-0, yeah. and 0, um, and, mm -hmm. you know, they felt like they got screwed out of that national championship. Obviously, Michigan State and Notre Dame had tied in their game that year, and they were kind of co-champions, I think, as I recall. Um, depending That's on the right. poll. That's right. Yeah. Were. yeah. Yeah. So, um, that, but I, I'll tell you, just kind of moving on uh, to, to another controversial, uh, you probably, I know you guys remember this. It's not, I guess you could say, um, it's, it's the SEC now, uh, certainly wasn't then, but when Texas and Arkansas played in 1969, yeah. if you, if you remember Richard Nixon, who was the president declared yeah. that the winner of the oh, game yeah would be the national champion. And oh, Joe Paterno, he wasn't too happy about that. He had an undefeated team at Penn State, if you remember. And uh, he, he kind of had a great quote. I don't know if you remember this or not, but um, I, I guess it's okay to tell this, but he, he, he was asked, Joe Paterno was asked how he felt about, you know, being kind of what he felt like screwed out of the national championship and, and, and that the president of the United States would actually in, insert himself in a position to, to make that declaration that the winner would be the national champion. And he said, they, they asked him, what would you say to, uh, uh, to, to Richard Nixon, if you had a chance? And he said, I would tell him the same thing that the little 80 year old woman told the priest when she went to confession or not the 80 year old, the, the lady who went to the priest to, to talk to him about, getting on birth control and that is when he advised her not to she said you know play at the game you know make of the rules right so uh, <laughs> so yeah. that was i thought that was a classic uh quote from joe paterno yeah and and, and yancy porter jumping here rebel yell hotline catch it monday nights 6 p.m sports 56 whbq and super talk mississippi and Yancey, I figured you'd got caught in a meeting or something like that, but we're talking a little college football, little history and all like that. We had a lot of heavy dose of basketball 
in the first part of the show, but jump in this conversation and talk college football with us. If I have to twist your arm, I will. Well, I mean, we're going back to the 1960s, so that was before my time, but obviously that was a, a good decade for the Rebels, the 50s and the 60s, uh, with, with Johnny Bald, it was a shame that Ole Miss and Alabama's, you know, listening to the Alabama teams, uh, did not play, but a couple times during that era, um, you know, so that, uh, I think that would be one thing that jumps out to me, Rodney, I don't know about you. Rodney, hopefully, hopefully we didn't lose Rodney. Are, okay, yeah, Rodney, are you, are you still with us? We 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 may have lost him. Yeah, I'm okay, here. Yeah, yeah. Can you I, hear I, me? I, Yancey was just asking you a question. I just didn't know if you heard it. Yeah, I, I lost you for a second. What was the question? Yeah, we were you you were going back to the '60s and talking about the Alabama teams and and things of that nature, and I know that. Archie Manning in the infamous game there where they had, you know, oh, yeah. orders, but during the vault and bare days, uh, Ole Miss and Alabama didn't face each other but a couple of times for about a 25-year period. Um, I just thought it was a shame that the two powerhouse programs out of the SEC in that era did not did not face each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you're right. And there was uh, – I, I watched that game actually, 33-32. And I've talked to Scott Hunter about that 69 game a lot. And he told me, he said, he's told me this more than once. He said, you know, the crazy thing is, he said, Legion Field held maybe 70,000 at the time. And he, he said, I've, I've had 250,000 people tell me they were there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but, but no, that was, and if you remember the next year, it was a hyped up game, you know, the rematch. And Scott Hunter was hurt. And Ole Miss intercepted on the first possession, and it was a blowout. I think it was like 48-23 or something like that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that was one of the all-time great – even though that wasn't a great Alabama yeah. team, that was one of the all-time great Buddy games. Martin, I remember as a kid watching that at LV and Mary Sharp's house in East Memphis off of Briarview as a kid on a Saturday night. We all got together, had a cookout at their house, and watched that game – on the color TV, and we were all in the den, on the floor, and hanging on. And and and, and, and I think LV went to Alabama, and Mary went to Ole Miss. They were friends of our family, and uh, God, it was wild. I mean, they, their marriage survived it, but it was it was a hell of <laughs> hell of a night. Buddy Martin, you remember these great games? Well, and, you kind you you you, you dated your show. You said watch the color TV. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, not I many people. say that. But people hey, think buddy, that it's in color, yeah. Buddy, I got a question for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Darren, uh, how, how involved is Florida right now in spring practice? Where, where are they right now? Well, there's a little bit of a, a, a drop-off because they had spring break. They're, they're, they're really early on their first couple of days. And, well, what, uh, what is – what what is the quarterback situation look like right now? Well, they got Florida? their quarterback from last year. He's back, but the young guy coming in, I'm in love with. I, okay. I just think he is there's some superb player. Just what little I made in my declaration already on you know, Lagway said. Look, yeah. you know, people said you can't make a judgment, but you just watched him on video and he's in practice, and you haven't even talked to him. I said, the hell, I can't. I said, you know, I said, look, in romance, we love, we, we believe in love at first sight, don't we? I've seen enough <laughs> quarterbacks in Florida to kind of know what I like. I like the way he walks on the field, I like the way he looks in his uniform, I like the way he throws the ball, I like his composure. He looks like a quarterback and a and a championship quarterback. And I'll make that statement now. This guy is something really, really, really special, and I, I look forward to it now. No, they got the guy they need. They're back. He's going to be. He obviously is their is their QB, and he he'll. But the Lagway will play in every game, so it's early on now. Too early to call. I've already to call. I've already called it. Now, you're the quarterback in the future. If they can get past this brutal year, what some are calling the hardest schedule in college football history. I don't know if I go that far, but it's a tough one, and yeah. there's no let up, especially the back half, and they. End up the season with Ole Miss there. So, yeah, just let me jump in real fast. Thanks for the question. Robin, you mentioned the color to me. Context for old guys is important because people, like I used to joke, 
you know, people think that all the sports started in 89 with the ESPN. And that's the year they started. And there was some, it was some history prior to that. And so, somebody mentioned, I think, right. He mentioned Texas, Texas, Arkansas. Those were the heydays, man, of college yeah. football. Who knew they would become SEC teams one day, but yeah, yeah those were great games. Yeah. I became a bit of a Texas fan back in those days and later I actually got a chance to go out to Austin a couple of times and to cover some games and meet some people. And I loved Texas, but I, they don't cross my, my radar very often. And now finally we get Texas. So, Rob, you and I are doing a show Friday on this. Yeah. And I, I've got a piece as soon as Brendan gets it up on uh, the culture, the cowboy culture taking over the southern gentlemen of uh, – and the SEC, how will that go? Because as you said, and you're quoted in this piece, Rob, is that they'll have a big billboard in Dallas that says, or Austin, that says, Texas welcomes the SEC. <laughs> not, uh, not the other way around. You know, so. yeah, it's telling the billboard. truth. <laughs> well, Rodney, think about that episode of the Beverly Hillbillies when Uncle Jed was running for mayor of Beverly Hills and Jethro had the plane flying around with the big banner. It said in, in all caps, Jethro Bodine says in the bottom right hand corner, vote Jed Clampett. <laughs> Rod, Rod, Rodney and Yancey and Buddy and, and Brendan, this is absolutely awesome having all y'all on here together. Every time Buddy comes on here, it's so cool because his connection and his memory and his mental acumen are off the charts. And, you know, Yancey, you referenced it a minute ago the 50s and the 60s. My dad is a kid. He's listening right now. Grand Bob, by the way, it is Tuesday, March uh, 19th, 2024. Uh, just He always says, put that date in the day of the show, because sometimes I forget what day it is. But anyway. Oh, don't you, we you, all? Yeah. And, and R R Yancey, you referenced that. As a kid, Dad used to sneak into Crump Stadium in Memphis. They would have double headers. Ole Miss would play, say, uh, you know, Memphis maybe, or Tennessee would play Mississippi State. But as a kid, he would sneak into Crump Stadium and always thought he was going to Ole Miss. And then he became an architect. And one go, and it was either LSU or Auburn. He ended up at Auburn. But, man, Yancey, your recollection of history, like Rodney's and Brendan's and Buddy's, is off the charts. And here it is, Ole Miss right now had their best season numbers-wise, 11 wins regular season in school history. Talk about that enthusiasm in Oxford right now. And by the way, we have the vitamin shop, Oxford and Olive Branch. Justin Ross will be on with us a few minutes tomorrow to talk about it out at the regalia in Oxford. Check them out. Open Monday through Saturday, 9.30 a.m., 8 p.m., and Sundays, 10.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. You won't get the blank stare when you go in there. They know what they're talking about. Supplements, probiotics, uh, pre-workout, active workout, and post-workout. The vitamin shop, Oxford and Olive Branch, Mississippi. But, Yancey, let's talk about the Rebels, and then I want to go back to, to Rodney, and, and we'll bounce it around a few more minutes. Yeah, um, you know, the spring practice opened up three. They've had three practices to date before spring break. Uh, today is the first day the media will have a chance to view spring practice, and that's it. Uh, we get one day. Um, they kind of switch things up this year. They're totally shutting down uh, access for – media and fans this year, unless you kind of know uh, the direction that they, they are looking at for this yep. year's team. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's going to be a, a big spring. You know, you've got 37 new players on the team. Um, that's, you know, when you do 85 minus 37, that's, uh, that's a lot of new, new players. So, um, you know, anytime in the Lane Kiffin era, it's going to be a lot of turnover. But, uh, you know, they, they return just about their two deep all across uh, the field. So um, this is the most experience they brought back in the Kiffin era right now. Um, you know, they've got uh, obviously their quarterback. The, the, big, the big question mark is who's going to fill Quinshawn Judkins' shoes. Uh, you know, as everybody knows, he transferred to Ohio State. They've got Riscano, a, a freshman running back from Texas that they're really high on. And I think that's going to be a big storyline this spring is is how does he develop? Uh, you know, obviously they got uh, Benton uh, returning back, uh, returning for Ole Miss, the, the one-two punch there that last year. And, and so they got to get that two punch, right? They got the one, now they need the two. And then when you look at the uh, 
offensive line. That was what really kind of caused them during that Georgia uh, series, uh, excuse me, game last year when they had some injuries leading up to the uh, the game, and then they lost another two starting offensive linemen, and Ole Miss really got exposed that they didn't have the depth on the offensive line. So they bring back four of their five starters, but they added four starters from other schools, including two from Washington, which is – I'm still a little curious why why he didn't bring them over there to Alabama, but uh, two two starters there at Washington that started for two or three years for them off the top offensive line unit in Washington. So there's a lot of optimism that that problem is going to be solved, but you never know until you get on the field. So – There'll be a lot of eyes on that offensive line. And then defensively, you know, they lose some cornerbacks and, uh, you know, replacing those guys, one that uh, Rodney's familiar with there that comes over from Alabama. And then on the defensive line, they added, you know, three all-SEC players uh, in the portal there on that defensive line and returned the majority of their defensive line. So there's a lot of optimism. They're going to be really strong in that in that front seven. Well, Rodney – I mean, Yancey points out the numbers. Uh, let's do the same thing with Alabama. I love this conversation because you, you just cannot talk enough about college football. And and you can catch, of course, Yancey, Monday nights, 6 p.m., Sports 56, WHBQ Memphis, and Super Talk Mississippi, the Rebel Yell Hotline, Chuck Roundsville, the Ole Miss Spirit, Harry Harrison, Gary Darby, Gordon Ford when he's on there. But unbelievable content. It's must-listen-to uh, content every week. Rodney, you do a great show, Tider Insider TV, Tuesday nights at 6.30. Let's talk a little about both sides real quick, and then Buddy will jump back in. Uh, yeah, you talking about Alabama spring practice? Is that oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like what Buddy said about Florida. You know, they had three practices uh, before spring break last week, and – you know, I thought everything went extremely well, all the feedback we got. And, again, now we're limited as well, too. We can't talk to coaches now. We do get a, those opportunities. Uh, and then uh, what you didn't have under Saban. And, yeah. Um, you know, so we, but we did get a 30-minute viewing period uh, on one of the practices. I, th I thought it was really high tempo. I thought oh, they got in a ton of reps. Uh, I think that's really how his practices are designed. Um, so I thought from every all the feedback I've gotten, everyone I've spoken to that had opportunities to observe all three practices, I thought it went really, really well uh, for the first week. But, you know, now this tomorrow, today, actually, Tuesday, um, they start, they restart. They've got 12 practices left. So we'll see. But, you know, there's obviously, a, you know, some who are still questioning the quarterback situation. Uh, Milrose got a you know, obviously got a lot to learn, but all the other quarterbacks do as well. And he's got the experience and, but they've got a really great room of quarterbacks. They've got to find, and, and uh, Yancey made this comment about, he wondered why Alabama didn't take those Washington offensive linemen that, uh, and, and, you know, that that's a great point. I mean, I, I, I wondered the same thing because you're probably going to certainly look in the portal, maybe for an offensive tackle, um, you know, in the spring after when it opens in April. So uh, we'll see there. But they're, look, their they're, they're wide receiver room, I think it has a chance to be really, really good. There's a true freshman, remember this name, Caleb Odom, who actually Ole Miss recruited extremely hard. There was a time when people thought he might go there. He's about 6'5". He's 210 pounds. He was going to play kind of that Amari Nyblack role as that H-back, but tight end type guy. But He's just so athletic. He's so good uh, that they really like him as a wide receiver. He had a big first week. He was kind of the rave of the, the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, Kane Womack now here. Um, obviously, he's got Ole Miss ties as well with his dad. But, um, you know, I think they should be really strong up front. That group looks great on the hoof. Uh, they have a lot of guys to work with up front. Um, obviously, you got to replace – Dallas Turner and Chris Braswell on the outside, but they've got, you know, I think I counted it, Rob. I think they have seven guys in the, that that play outside that were five star players coming out of high school. So wow. uh, they got a lot of talent. Uh, they've obviously he mentioned uh, Yancey mentioned Trey Amos going to be a great player at Ole Miss. That was a big loss for Alabama at corner. Um, thought he could have been a great great player for this team. Uh, but Damani Jackson's transferred in from USC. 
Jaleel Hurley is a returning guy that, 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 that's been here. And then they signed three five-star corners in this last class. So all five of those guys were five stars coming out of high school. Keon Sab transfers in from Michigan. He'll kind of take the place of Caleb Downs. Uh, so, yeah, they've got – they did have some losses, but they've kind of got some guys that have the talent to, to you know, be really good too. Yeah. Buddy, jump in here. My head's still spinning. Uh, you know, I'm still trying to figure out whether they have divisions anymore in the SEC. You know, that's a subject that comes up a lot. We got two powerhouse programs coming aboard this fall, and we have a lot to learn about this. We got new names, new players. We used to be able to know every roster, every every team. We don't even know the coaching staffs, but it's changing. Hopefully for the better. It's funny we had a conversation about Ole Miss, and either Lane Kiffin or Jackson Dart's name came up. There are some people think Jackson Dart might be one of the top two or three quarterbacks in the league. I don't know. And we know Lane Kiffin is just sitting and waiting in the bushes, and he'll probably spring on us and come to Dallas and uh, SEC media days. And But let me just say this about Ole Miss. Again, context for old guys, uh, from old guys. We talked about Arkansas, Texas being the great era of, of, of college football. Uh, you know, Ole Miss was a dominant team. People forget Johnny Fault won six SEC titles, six. Yep. He never gets mentioned among the greats. Uh, and by the way, did this guy, Nick Saban, is he still in the league? I don't know if he is or not. But anyway, uh, you got you got guys like that. Ole Miss has had rich football history, and now they're relevant in a big way. And I think it's going to be a fascinating year to see what happens in the West, so much turnover. So, yeah, Ole Miss is a, is a, is a terrific program. Good to see them back again, and it's going to make the SEC better. But remember – uh, just so you remember, if you're going to out to Dallas and, and or Austin and you want to ask for an Arnold Palmer, uh, you know, around there and up in Oklahoma, the drink is not an Arnold Palmer. You know what that is? Not like that. So Roy Rogers. Roy Rogers drink is <laughs> what's called Roy Rogers up in Oklahoma. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, times have changed. I'm hoping for the better. I just got to figure out how many playoff teams you're going to have eventually. 12 and 14, not 16. So, yeah, let's bring it on. We figured it out, I guess, day by day, and the wonderful game of college football. It will not be unscathed, but the new version of it, when the market settles in, and I told you this, Rob, a year ago, it's going to take a minute. When the market settles in, in a couple of years, we understand you're paying a million two or whatever. You're paying for a quarterback. By the way, didn't Justin Dart get a deal, an ILD with, a, with an airline? Uh, you had private jets? I believe he did. Yeah, so maybe – yeah. Nicholas Same Harris, uh, a local. Uh, it's, it's it's basically where uh, private private planes where, wherever you charter. I say they're local, but they've kind of spread all throughout the deep south now. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. Yeah. So times are changing, but it, when it all settles in, I'm hopeful the great game of game of college football will be what we hoped it would be. Maybe not the same, and that's okay. I just hope the change is better. I as one who've campaigned for a national playoff. And I campaigned 30 years ago, Rob, you know this, that they're going to condense it down to a Super League with 16 team, with, with 65 teams, whatever, and let them play, play it down. It's happening that before our very eyes, I hope I don't live to regret my dreams and hopes. Well, I thought it was it, interesting, speaking of the playoffs, where the new deal that was cut that came out yesterday that they can renegotiate after the 16th season – if there's any more conference realignment or the playoffs uh, format change. Mm-hmm. So they are leaving that window open, speaking yeah. of 16, to go. We all know it's going to go to 16 teams. I mean, yeah. it's, it's yeah. going to happen. Anyway. And so uh, it looks like after the 26th season is when they're leaving that window open to go ahead and move it to 16 teams. So we're only going to look at about a three-year run at this 12 team format. And I just, I, I thought that was very interesting yesterday when that news came out. Go yeah, back and is. look at the history of that, Rob. Look at the history of the NCAA basketball tournament. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How many did it used to be in, in you know, 16, 16 32, yeah. 32, whatever? It's going to happen in football. Yeah. There won't be that many, but they're going to definitely have a bigger. It'll be, yeah. you'll say, well, take the top 25 or whatever. It's going to yeah. grow. It, 
And we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And listen, unbelievable conversation. Yancey Porter, Rebel Yell Hotline. Uh, Rodney Orr, Tyler Insider. He's also got a great new book that will resonate with you. Uh, read it. Bigger Than Bama. Uh, I'm reading it right now. Buddy Martin's show every weeknight, 9 p.m. Eastern, live on YouTube. Brendan Martin, our executive producer, and everybody. Most often we see the face of Christ in the least among us. Don't ever doubt for one second. We live in the greatest country in the world. Just look around you. You're surrounded by the greatest people. We're all blessed. I love having Yancey and Rodney and Buddy on this show and Brendan because you get it. Have a blessed day. You know, I, I believe in saying that. And every time I'm on here, I feel blessed because we have the best guests and sponsors and viewers on the planet. SEC, it is family. Ain't nothing like it anywhere. Got a great show in store for you tomorrow. But uh, thanks, everybody, for participating in this show. Uh, we cannot do it without you. We're here to serve. So thank you. And uh, as we say in the South, y'all have a good one. <laughs> thank you, Ralph. We'll see y'all tomorrow. In a perfect world, you'd set a health goal and results would happen overnight. In this world, the real world, it takes time, dedication, and the right support to achieve your best self. The Vitamin Shops health enthusiasts are here to make sure you're not wasting a single moment on the wrong supplements. From the highest quality sports nutrition and superfoods to the most sought after trends, you'll find a huge variety of science-backed solutions for every goal. And the people to help guide you along the path to greatness. Unbelievably, every two minutes in our communities, a child is either bought or sold for sex. I am Ari Dickey, board member for the Nashville Anti-Human Trafficking Coalition. Join me and millions of others in our fight against human trafficking and for its victims by helping to educate the most vulnerable among us, our middle and high school students. Go to nhtcoalition.org, become a partner, and help keep our families safe, because none of God's children are for sale. Sidelines with Rob Brown.